Today I wanted to show you a video version of how to make uh, changes to current SharePoint master page using SharePoint 2013 app. Uh, so there's, um, a, there's a recent blog post that I posted here, uh, which you have a link in this video, uh, that talks about uh, the code and kind of like mechanics of how to achieve what we're about to see today. And here's the code that we're going to be using. And uh, in the video I wanted to show you really what, what does it imply to make changes to current SharePoint master page using 2013 app. So why would you want to do something like that? Well, one of the things that you want to do is uh, potentially uh, sell uh, um, your app on uh, SharePoint 2013 Marketplace um, and make your branding available um, in um, as, as a SharePoint 2013 app. So as you can see on a SharePoint 2013 Marketplace, there's a variety of different apps, but there isn't any branding app. So you can actually create an app that, apply, uh, that applies custom branding to your site that actually changes the look and feel of your site. So that's pretty exciting. Let's take a look at how that's how that's done. First things first, um, I have my uh, dev site here, and that's the site that I'm going to be using for my test. Uh, and uh, it's URL pretty simple. If you want to get yourself a dev site, just uh, go search for uh, Office 2013 uh, developer site and sign up for a free trial and as well as you can extend the trial as well. Um, and also we'll be using a Visual Studio solution to basically uh, create an app and deploy it to our developer site. I'm going to be using a 2012 version uh, of Visual Studio with a SharePoint or Office 2013 dev tools. So you'll need that as well. Uh, when you uh, first open Visual Studio, you'll need, uh, um, you'll need to select the app uh, for SharePoint 2013 project, so that's another prerequisite. And uh, you'll get the solution structure similar to this. So in this solution structure, ever, we'll leave everything as is. Um, the only thing that we're going to be modifying, really, we're going to be modifying this app.js file. So this app.js file, that what you see right now on the screen, is the only thing that we're going to change. So essentially, leave everything as is in out-of-the-box template and just modify this app.js file, file, and that'll, that'll take you basically where we are right now. So um, um, so let's let's actually uh, let's actually um, walk through the solution and see what actually happens here. So what happens is when you deploy an app, one of the things that app gets is the default page, and you can see in here default ASPX is our default page, and that's something that's provisioned by default. This default ASPX uh, calls um, on document ready calls the SharePoint ready. Uh, JavaScript function and that uh, SharePoint ready function is right in our uh, app.js. Uh, so here it is and our SharePoint ready uh, calls provision files um, and then which basically in turn calls all of those supporting functions here. So let me kind of uh, step through the concept of what's what we're going to be achieving through this code and then uh, that way you know what are, what are all the things happening in the code and you can actually see the code in the article, in the previous article, but we'll also run the application to see how, how it actually works. So what we need to uh, to achieve here in our in our solution is get a hold of the current SharePoint master page. And in this case, I'm using Office 365, but it doesn't really matter. You can get a hold of any master page. So I need to determine what is the current master page because user may already have some customizations on the master page. Like they may already have some branding changes here. So I want to determine what is their current master page, then, um, uh, then read it, make changes to it, and then save it as a new master page, right? Because I don't want to rack their existing master page. They may also want to go back to that master page. So I just want to take the copy of their existing master page, uh, make changes to it. In my case, the changes that I'm going to be making, I'm going to be adding a, a bit of a snow effect to the site. Um, so, uh, so that's an example of uh, making a, you know an interaction change. So I'm going to be adding a JavaScript, but you can really add anything. You can like add rounded corners here, remove, add logo. Really, it's it's yours. It's yours to play with, um, with this sort of uh, customization. So once that's done, and I have the, my new master page, I'm going to save it back uh, to the site with the new name. I'm not going to rack the old one. Um, I'm going to save it with a new name and set it as a current master page. So as a result, if, if something went wrong, a user doesn't like it, they can always go back to site settings and say, you know what, I'm going to switch this master page to the way it was. Um, you know, using SharePoint Designer or uh, going uh, the Web Designer Gallery.
So in the code here, I have a SharePoint ready function and it turns this SharePoint ready function um, calls the update master page file or master file. So update master file uh, really starts with getting a client context of the current site and uh, really getting the master page gallery for further use. And once that's successful, I'm going to call the retrieve files to provision. Uh, retrieve files to provision in turn it just basically gets a hold of the current master page and gets the master page content. So gets the get the master page content um, is right here. And uh, basically what we do here, we determine the URL of the master page and then we, um, we call the uh, get file contents um, function to actually get the, the actual text contents of the, of the file. So we, the function is right here. So uh, this function uh, makes use of the API uh, to, get, uh, to get actual file by server relative URL. And here I just specify parameters. Uh, to get my current master page. And if that call has been, you know, is, is successful, I call create new master to actually create new master page file with those particular file names here um, and, uh, and write the content um, to, um, to that new master page. So obviously the content that I'm going to uh, have here, which is data.body, um, is not just, uh, just any content, just not, the, it's not this exactly the same content. In my case, it's actually, uh, the content plus, um, some of the changes that I want to see and the changes that I want to see is actual, uh, the snow effect that I'm going to be adding to this master page. So I'm going to space out this uh, particular piece, but basically what you're looking here is a reference to uh, jQuery and the actual a plugin that implements the snow and also the function on ready. That's that, that calls the snow. Uh, so that's the content that I'm going to add uh, right, uh, right before the had function of the mm -hmm. current master page and I'm going to save it with a new name. So in here I'm basically uh, saving the uh, or creating the file with a new name. This is going to be a, a file name is going to be new master dot master. And uh, uh, once that all one that's once that's all successful, um, uh, basically um, I'm just going to you know, execute this uh, function call and and assign some of the properties to my master page, and, such as uh, master page content type and uh, and the title of the master page. So that's going to be done in update list item properties. So update list item properties is right here, and essentially it gets a hold of the master page and uh, assigns um, uh, and assigns the properties here. Update master properties. So update master properties actually sets the content type to the file content type, which in our case is a, a master page. Um, the uh, master page is, is our content type uh, versus you know page layout because they all live in the same gallery. Uh, we also have the title and we also have some additional parameters like UI version, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we publish the file. And uh, pretty much we're done. Uh, in this case, I have generic success and generic fail function. Uh, in case things got, you know, went wrong, I uh, alert the user. And if things uh, are all good, then I'm just going to say provisioning succeeded. And I'm going to set the current master page as the as the current master page or as, as our new master page that we've just created. So let's take a look at how that uh, how that all happens in action. I'm going to right click here and deploy to my site. The interface that runs this particular customization is pretty simple. All it does, basically, as soon as the page is loading, it executes all of this functionality. So I don't have any buttons to say retract the master page or reset, but you may want to do that just to allow or give your user an option to, um, you know, greater control around the master page um, and how to retract it. But in my case, it's just a simple solution where I just deploy the master page as soon as they hit the, at the page. So in this case, the deployment has succeeded. Uh, my app is, gonna, is provisioned and uh, the uh, Inner Explorer asked me if I trust it. So that's one other thing that you need to do in order for you to set a new master page, you actually need to request the, uh, the full control permissions on the uh, uh, from the app. So in app manifest here under permissions, you'll need to um, uh, request a site collection or site full control in order to set the master page. So that's what uh, my app is asking. Are you sure you want to give this user full control uh, on the site collection? So I'm going to say yes. And my app now is going to uh, determine the current master page, modify it, save it as a new name, and set it as current master page. And it looks like it succeeded. So let's go back to the demo site and see it in action. So because um, you can see there's a little warning here, because we used uh, file names, let me go back to Visual Studio here. Um, 
uh, because we used the file the files on the external network I'm gonna have the little warning here so you probably want to copy it to a local document library and then you won't re receive that warning but in my case I'm just gonna switch back here uh, I'm just gonna say uh, I'm okay with uh, with this with this content uh, to be shown and as you can see the snow little effect uh, it's barely visible on this interface but you can see that the snow effect is actually working so again just to iterate this is a really powerful concept you can actually update anything here you can run custom javascript custom add custom ui remove some of the elements here on the top purely custom make any sort of customizations and about and the, the the best part of it is that you can actually packages as package it as a sharepoint app and uh, and sell it on the marketplace so hopefully you found it uh, useful and uh, and stay tuned for more videos at sharemarch.com.